All right, we have a new chapter of Kaiji, <clears throat> chapter 311. It looks like they made the cover, uh, or there's a color page or something. Um, but we see our Asian trio here, Chang downing an energy drink as he nervously drives the car. Oh, this is the, the latest volume, I see, I see. Meanwhile, uh, Kaiji and Mario back at the house, eating convenience store food. Clearing our Endo's devilish senses. Narrowing is the note around the apartment. Approaching is the time of Kaiji's capture. Um, but yes, the Bulwark arc, the much-discussed, unprecedented apartment Bulwark manga of Kaiji held up in his room. This chapter is called Aspiration. That could pertain to anything. Um, <clears throat> I, I really am recognizing the genius of this arc the more I think about it. Um... Before, it's kind of hard to think about uh, arcs as arcs when you're first kind of reading them because you're not sure how long it's going to go on um, or what's going to end up being significant. But now I can see this is going to be the apartment bulwark arc. Um, and now that I'm kind of thinking about it in those terms, I think it's really genius the way it's come about. We don't normally think, or at least I don't, think of Fukumoto series kind of in terms of uh, arc structure and, and arc development the way that I do like One Piece or something like that. Often when I'm talking about those series, I'm talking about like cards, um, like that you build up a hand of potential things that you can use in a given arc that already kind of have a significance and power. So uh, in, in like One Piece and things like that, those things are very clear. But in something like this, it, where it's much more about kind of individual, localized, isolated experiences of each gamble or whatever, um, it's less of a sense of that. But now that I'm thinking about this arc, <clears throat> it's pretty genius, okay? It's like they're doing this whole escape thing for the this saga of the manga, and uh, a, a pretty typical kind of story beat in an escape series is something like this where you're holed up and you're trying to maneuver your way out of a building while everyone is watching you. So it makes sense that you want to do something like that. Um, I, I feel like the Kaiji's mom thing is something that he's wanted to do for a while. And this is a fantastic opportunity to do it, to have Kaiji and his mom hold up together. And it's a fantastic way for to have the Kaiji Endo duel. Um, because of course, normally when Kaiji is competing with someone, he's gambling. But Endo does not strike me as the type of person who gambles. Endo is the type of person to look down his nose at anyone who gambles. Um, so this is a fantastic way to have those characters really square off and put their intellectual metal to the test um, in a way that doesn't involve gambling. <clears throat> it's, it's really great. I, I think um, he's very cleverly played these cards here, cards that I didn't even consider being in his hand, but I'm sure are things he's wanted to do for quite a while. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm looking forward to seeing what will happen in this one. Of course you will. Obviously, you have to stay. Oh, yeah, they were trying to leave. <laughs> they are trying to change their shift. Um, but Endo is not having it. The stakeout is for the purpose of finding and capturing Kaiji. Kaiji, the one who stole the 2.4 billion yen. He won the 2.4 billion yen. See, he just doesn't respect gambling. Um, it's that very Kaiji that right now is stuck Trapped in his mother's apartment. Chances of that are high. They're thick, rich, and concentrated. Dramatically, peculiarly, and everly, increasingly large. I see. I see. That's how he's feeling about it. Day after day after day, sitting in your car, twiddling your thumbs. After all that hard work. Uh, I'm not. My patience has finally paid off. It's about to come to fruition. You guys are telling me you want to go home at this most important, crucial of times. <clears throat> Two most essential members that actually saw the target of our investigation go home just because it's time. Not trying to go home anymore. <laughs> you know, like, we've given up. We've given up. We're tired of your threats and your violence and your intimidation. We give up. We'll stay. We'll stay. And, and Endo still isn't having it. He's still really trying to drive home. That no, <laughs> you uh, you really do need to stay. He's just talking to himself now, isn't he? <laughs> what was the point of the 24 7 stakeout? What the hell was it all for? <laughs> I like I like Endo as a character. I like that he has a little bit of almost like rabidness to him, you know? 
that in many ways he's just the perfect paragon of logic, like many other Fukumoto characters. But he has his own rough edges. He's a ranting kind of guy. He's, he's like a violent sort of guy, you know? He, he goes off the handle at people. <laughs> he's talking to himself. <laughs> he won't acknowledge that they've already given in. I was your age. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> not that. Not that. <laughs> they know that they're just entering the second wave of the rant. In this kind of position, even if I was told to leave, I would implore them to let me stay anyways. And here he is fighting with our man, Tonegawa, um, who, who, because of the anime and stuff, has really elevated in my, my rankings of how much I like the Fukumoto characters. <laughs> oh, I love Tonegawa. Um, even if I was told to leave, I would implore them to let me stay anyways. I'm not lying. If you're able to find Kaiji here and now, and that will set you free from your lookout duty, won't it? Ah! That's like a really good argument, isn't it? <clears throat> He's flipping it on its head a little bit. Because he was laying into them for, you know, the, the fact that they had put so much effort into this stakeout. They had been waiting here this whole time, that, that hard work or whatever. <clears throat> and and he was trying to kind of appeal to their loyalty to the Tei Corporation. Like, don't you want to be doing this? Like, don't you want to see this thing through? But now, you know, he's hitting it from the other angle. Don't you want to see this through? Because then it will end. You won't have to sit in the car anymore. Your endless, meaningless, and pointless task of watching this place will keep going with no end in sight. If you don't catch it now, your life as a scarecrow will only continue. And it's true. If they catch Kaiji now, that will all have been redeemed. It will all have been worth it for that moment when they catch Kaiji. But only if they catch him. If they let him go, it, it, the Sif, 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 Sisyphusian task of being a human scarecrow will continue. What happened? Huh? They think it's someone else's problem. <laughs> They're still not totally motivated. I, I feel like Endo really just hasn't recognized that they've agreed to stay on and thinks he still needs to convince them. <laughs> I get it now. You guys must be fanatics, right? <clears throat> Look out, fanatics. You must think that people watch <laughs> Dark Place is the most fun thing in the world, huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh, man. Endo is really losing it now. Nothing more exciting to you than, guys, than the thought of sitting in your car by the side of the road, watching an apartment complex, spending day after day wasting your time, staying blankly at the end of the building in comfort with nothing to do. That's therapeutic to you, isn't it? <laughs> Here's a nice, lovely shot of the apartment complex. <clears throat> we see again up to 34. I'm still curious if we can work out the actual total number of apartments involved in this complex, which again, to me, is extremely cozy. To other people, claustrophobic, brutalist, Soviet block-like, whatever. But to me, it's all cozy. Anyways, not therapeutic. It's boring, to tell you the truth. See, now, now he's getting them a little provoked. Now he can really bring home this argument. <clears throat> we absolutely hate it. Why? Right as your mission is about to come to a close, at the moment that we capture a malevolent escape in the balance, are you trying to leave your station? I mean, I Endo's like a little crazy here, and this whole situation is a bit unreasonable. But I, I kind of get him. Like, he really flipped out when they said that they wanted to leave. And I get why. Because he's totally right. If not now, when? If you're not going to just do it, what has this all been for? Please let us stay here. Let us stay here, sir. Nice, nice. He's got them all the way to the very model of him, begging to be let to continue. Don't worry, I won't tell you to go home. I'll make a special exception for you. Oh, I just love that Endo is still just yelling all the time. Stay here until morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's just on the surface, but they're finally starting to say what they've been saying, should have been saying all along. Finally, ooh, Zawa. We got a little Zawa action. Finally at the way Japan is supposed to behave. Hmm. It's cold out here, so we need to get back in the car. 
go right ahead. Ooh, and that was like, you can see he's happy that, uh, that he allows them this, you know? He's, he's all about the power dynamics of the situation. He's all about <clears throat> them falling in line and stuff. I'm curious about this, the way Japan is supposed to behave. That, to me, starts to reflect a much larger, greater cultural attitude. That I wonder to what extent Fukumoto is trying to espouse through the character of Endo or criticize through the character of Endo. And, and what exactly that spirit of Japan means to him as a mangaka, you know? Um, like, this this sort of mentality of, like, you've been slaving over it. You've been sitting here in the same spot for hours doing it. Are you really going to stop right at the end? Are you really not going to bring it home, send it to the editor? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's There's, like, a parallel there. So I wonder if, if Endo's speech to the, the watch guys is almost Fukumoto pumping himself up for the idea of making manga. I don't know. In the past, I've tried to kind of read into Fukumoto's life from his works. Um, and then it turned out that what I was using to read into Fukumoto's life was not actually written by Fukumoto at all. So I, I hesitate now. I hesitate now when I'm trying to make these claims. So, yeah, I don't know. Um... The way Japan is supposed to behave. And just because it's like a villainous character, it's like an antagonist that's saying it, doesn't necessarily mean that Fukumoto doesn't believe it. Because Fukumoto really does make a good point of, of all of his villain characters, you know, having their own logic, having consistent beliefs, and, and sometimes saying a lot of things that quite make sense. They just happen to be opposed, for whatever reasons, to the antagonist. All right, so they got back in the car. The watch continues. This guy gets back in his car. What if your boss is left standing outside? You should be able to have restraint. It's cold out here. Oh, no, he's still pissed. <laughs> I wasn't sure what he thought about that. His facial expression was a little hard to read. But, uh, yeah. He's, he's annoyed that they would go back in the car while the boss is still standing outside. Now, that's a very Japanese working culture sort of thing. There's, there's stories I've heard of the idea that you can't leave the office until your boss leaves the office. So even if you have no work to do, you just sit there waiting for your boss to finish. It's kind of like that mentality, I guess. It's no helping it, I guess. That's all they are. This is all they are. It's going through their heads. Isn't I want to finish this job or I want to do my part or anything like that. The only thing they're thinking about is being let go. The time comes they want to be let go, let go from this boring job. That's why even a dog, even a dog, even if we had just a dog chained here, wouldn't be all that much different from how it is now. Just as aimless as a dog would be, just taking in what's right in front of them and nothing more. It's not even an exaggeration, it's the honest truth, that's how it is. <laughs> no. It's slightly larger than average watchdog. Look at these Fukumoto dog drawings! How blessed are we to see Fukumoto draw an animal? It doesn't happen too often. I, I'm struggling to think of other circumstances where, where we, we've seen an animal. There must be something. Anyways. Um, they're fantastic. Look at these dogs. Nothing but slightly larger than average watchdogs. Look at the dog in the car. Ah! Yes! Let's call up Fukumoto out of context.tumblr.com. Submit. <laughs> these dogs in the car. Hell yeah. They're just there. All they're doing is just being there. They really are scarecrows or signs. <laughs> There's nothing different between them and a street sign. <laughs> There's the, the Colonel Sanders statue that's in front of all the KFCs. <laughs> They're just signs. They're dogs or scarecrows or just signs. Oh, man. I don't know. Something about the idea of people being just signs. It reminds me of um, uh, the, the, the comedy show Flight of the Concords. 
<laughs> There's one where they're trying to get a job just being like a sign holder on the streets. And they make some joke about like, in the future, you could hold all sorts of things. <laughs> if you get good at holding the sign. <laughs> uh, all they do is just stand. Let me see, sir, there's a function. Just by saying they're motionless, he does something that's in a matter of speaking invaluable. He's really, wow, he's like dwelling on the Colonel Sanders KFC thing. Now I want KFC. Um, just look at this shot of the, the building itself. Hell yeah. Maybe I will get KFC. It's an option available to me. Damn you, Fukumoto. <laughs> that's not healthy. <laughs> valuable, as invaluable as a traffic light. Does what he does perfectly well. Advertising the chicken. He thinks about the chicken. <laughs> is, this, is Endo just thinking about chicken now? Is this really how Endo's brain works? It's not just that he's a savant at, at getting into the minds of the indebted degenerate, tracking him down. It's just that he has an obsessive line of thought about anything. And now it's the the KFC statue, and he's, he's like working through its psychology too. Oh, this is so great. Oh, this is... Mmm. <laughs> Take the car out for a spin. Oh, what's the plan here? Lure Kaiji out with chicken? What is the plan? What is the plan? Thinking about... The wing and the thigh. What is the plan? I'm definitely getting KFC though. I, it's over. It's over. I lost. It looks so good. It's not even that good. <laughs> but I just want it. Okay. Take the car out for a spin. All the chicken places were closed, so I went to the convenience store. Got some Odin, some chicken Odin. He's not gonna want that. He wants KFC. He wants the Colonel. Odin? Chicken the computer store, don't they? I don't know it would be the best fit. All I want was chicken. He just sincerely wanted the chicken. I thought he had some sort of revelation. I thought he like, had figured out some bizarre metaphor, the chicken unravel the kaiji's psyche, or or something like, you know, the, the statue of Colonel Sanders shows you that it's KFC, and then therefore uh, some other sort of presence outside of the building would make kaiji think that it was safe. But no, he just wants chicken. <laughs> he just wanted chicken. And these guys, worse than signs, he wanted to see, would it be more useful than the KFC statue? He throws it in his face! Oh no, he's just imagining throwing it in his face. Oh, I got some beer too. Oh, he's not going to like that. I don't think, well, I don't know. Could it be in the end, beer is what possibly placates Endo? So you got one thing right. So he squats down on the street, drinks his tasty acai beer, eats some Odin. Odin seems pretty good too, but no, we're getting KFC. Don't get mad, don't get mad, they didn't mean any harm. Let me have them, they got some good attributes too. They make peace. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. All right, I love that chapter. I love the shot of them eating at the end. It's so cozy. But dang, it made me watch chicken. So we're gonna get some chicken. Um, all right, that's uh, that's it for this chapter. Thanks again, as always, to Fukumoto Crazy. We inch our way towards getting caught up, and I, I have this terrible fear that forevermore I will just keep saying we're inching our way towards getting caught up because the rate at which I read it is slower than the rate at which the chapters come out. But no, 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 no. Have faith. Have faith. An, an explosive new era of content generation is coming. It is coming eventually. Um, but that's all I'll say about that for now. And uh, yeah, let's just look forward to the next chapter. Bye-bye.